All right, all right, all right, settle down. We got a special one today. We're gonna to be taking a look at Nuit de Faux from Louis Vuitton, uh, which has become a holy grail incense for me. Not just an incense, but a holy grail in general. Uh, I've become quite smitten with this perfume. I've been posting it on social media, sharing it with whoever will wanna smell it in person. Uh, the whole Louis Vuitton line, I think, is quite good. I think this Middle Eastern brand is a little bit better. It's not, uh, I don't think it's classified as its own bracket, but I'm sure it will in a matter of time, just like Guerlain has done with its Absolutes the Orient collection. I really like Ombre Nomad for a rose oud perfume i think it's gorgeous and i'm not one for the genre at all i think this is magnificent in the, one of my videos somebody commented this is just another overpriced uh montal queer de arabi which i completely disagree with you know they don't even belong in the same hemisphere uh montal and and these louis vuitton um, perfumes. Uh, another one, Le Sable Rose. Is, it's less my thing. Gorgeous perfume, but it's a little too um, subtle and and a little bit slow for my liking. Uh, it's basically a a very fresh rose bouquet with a hint of oud. And if you blink, you'll miss it. But just very slow to develop and. I don't know. I don't think it's that special to belong in this in this in this lineup. You know, I just I don't have room in my heart for it. Is what I'm trying to say. Le Sable Rose is gorgeous. It's just not for me. Let's leave it at that. But um, I'm not going to trash it. It's it's lovely. Um, so Nuit de Faux, You can see the, they all have their own certain colors. Le Sable Rose has that that tinge of purple, almost like a dark. Dark rose, right? Dark rose. And the Ombre Nomad, the bottle is, you can't see now, but if I shine a light, they get quite colorful. This is a brown, almost, I guess, for the nighttime. Ombre Nomad's a very dark fragrance. And Nuit de Faux, which means uh, burning night, night of fire, something like that. Depends on how you translate. And you can't see, maybe you can't. To me, it's a, it's a, a shade of green. Some people call it blue. To me, it's more green. Maybe it's something in between green and blue. Uh, but I think there's a reason for that, this color that they've chosen. And to me, it's because I get a ton of pine from this in the opening. Pine, Douglas fir, fir balsams, whatever you want to call it. Pine needles. I get... Uh, I just get, uh, you know, a lot of pine from this. And uh, green, I get a lot of green and fresh, crisp air. Almost like a, a fresh, crisp winter day where somebody's piled a stack of pine trees or fir balsams um, and gotten them ready to burn because it's very smoky and um, sticky. I get a lot of balsams and incense from this um, sap. I definitely get, you know, it's a dry pine trees, Christmas trees, um, very dry needles. It's not a wet green pine or Douglas fir. Uh, and I can almost hear it crackling and I can hear even the sap. It's the sap that's crackling. And it's very smoky and it's not it's not industrial smoke, almost like if you've smelt uh, Comme de Garçons Black, if you've smelt that, it's just overwhelmingly smoke. It's, it almost like smokes you out of your house. This is more smoke from a distance. You know, you can see over the horizon where somebody's um, set ablaze a stack of Christmas trees. So it's actually a really gorgeous, warm, creamy smoke. Um, green pine trees or fir balsams, incense, resins, balsams. 
and then you know shortly after that the oud kicks in and again it's again a very gorgeous oud skanky animalic dirty barnyardy yes 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 to everything um poopy absolutely ah uh, it's just a, a a fantastic combination of smoky incense and barnyardy oud and to me, it smells very authentic. It doesn't smell fake at all. It doesn't smell like a synthetic oud. I don't get any of that screechy nor limbinol. It's just very warm, balmy, creamy oud. That smell, you know, the poo factor, it's not a truck stop where somebody's just dropped a number two of a Wendy's Baconator. This is more of an innocent, you know, diaper baby poo or something like that um it's almost like somebody's filled dry pine needles inside of a a diaper a crappy diaper it's just so warm and i almost want to take this diaper and, and cuddle it and, and and fall asleep next to this you know it's just like that special there's also some musk in here and that just adds more to uh, the animalic quality, the barnyardiness. It's almost like a furry, there's a furriness to this. I sense something crittery in here. So it's overwhelm. There's like overwhelmingly this feeling of balsamicness to me. And I think a lot of people they struggle with what does balsam mean or, or they don't understand but you know to me it means several things um balsam means something warm and soothing and comforting almost like a lip balm or you know when people die they they fill them with balm or uh i always have this association with being a child and when i would play outside for you know the whole day and then because kids used to play outside before Wi-Fi. And uh, then I'd come back inside the house and I'd, I'd lay there. And I remember, you know, wearing shorts specifically. And throughout the day, I'd pick up this these layers of film or filth from outside. And they always had this tingling feeling on my legs. Like all the way up and down my legs, I had these tingling sensations. And I didn't see any dirt. They didn't look dirty. They didn't look muddy or mucky or any of that stuff. I just felt like they were dirty and I can feel the sensations. And that's how I feel. Like to me, balsamic is more of a feeling than an actual something I smell. So it's something warm, creamy, soothing, tingling and something I kind of feel like all up and down my body. Uh, there's a, a mentholated aspect to this. It's not minty. It's more just kind of adds a, a, a depth of freshness, very deep fragrance, very complex, very well composed. Um, craftsmanship is spectacular. Uh, Oriental, I get a little bit of vanilla, not too much ambers and stuff like that. That might come into contact with the incense and the benzoins, but I don't find it overly sweet at all. It's just really dry, woody, smoky, uh, a lot of incense, leather. So leather's really interesting in here. Uh, it To me, it's not a brand new leather jacket. It's not a fresh car interior. It's almost like The, whole, the, the fragrance as a whole feels leathery to me. I don't get like a leather note or birch tar or, or any of that. It's more of a, just a balmy leatheriness. It's very dark and ashy. And the incense, this being an incense based perfume, it's not, it's not very churchy to me. It's not liturgical incense. It's not something you'd smell in a cathedral. This to me is uh, firewood incense, the scent that you you'd get out going outdoors and, and smelling in the fresh air from um, pine or firs burning. That's the type of incense it is to me. 
It's, it doesn't remind me of church at all. It's more fresh, crisp, uh, winter day incense. Absolutely gorgeous. The whole thing is just really buttery and warm and, and creamy and soothing and, and enveloping, you know, it's just, it's bloody brilliant. The oud kind of, uh, it's got this blue cheese. I, I keep getting this blue, not only is it poopy, but I keep getting like blue cheese aspects to it. Pepper, there's all, I don't know if I mentioned the pepper note. It's, it's a lot of black pepper in the opening and uh, the pepper runs throughout this. It's a very picture perfect black pepper. One of the better black peppers I've, I've, I've smelt in, in my time, I can tell you that. Uh, very spiritual with that incense. To me, it's, uh, I just really connect with myself when I wear this. I, you know, I kind of, when I smell this or when I'm wearing this through the day, I just want to, you know, abstain from my Wi-Fi, my electronics, my cell phone, my devices, and, and just kind of like sit with myself, you know, sit in my feelings and my truth and, and, and just kind of separate myself from thought and connect, you know, connect with the universe and, and just kind of be completely aware of my surroundings and my present moment and just enjoy life for the moment. And this is what I feel when I wear this perfume. I just feel so connected to myself and the universe and I, I feel consciously aware. And I think that's the thing when we're consciously aware, we, 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 we separate from our emotions. But the thing is, perfumes are emotional, so they kind of counterbalance each other. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, like I said, holy grail, and I'm just completely smitten with Nuit de Faux. Um, I uh, look forward to any more releases from this Middle Eastern brand or, or subcategory of Louis Vuitton. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Check it out. Be sure to check out Nui Defoe. Um, if you've smelt it, drop a comment. I love reading your comments. I appreciate all of your comments. I see you all. Uh, drop a like for this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Um, and we'll see you shortly, very shortly, soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.